All right, everyone, good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Dr. Marin. I have a very special guest with me today. His name is Dr. Tom McCauley, and he is a amazing periodontist, periodontist in the Fort Lauderdale area. He's been working for what, 40 years now? How long have you had your business up and running? Uh, 49 years. 49 years, amazing. <laughs> So he's actually located in my building, and that ha that's how I connected with Dr. Tom. He came highly recommended to me, and I just clicked with him instantly. He's someone I look up to professionally, and he's helped me get through some troubles in entrepreneurship that he's always been there to answer my questions and keep my head on straight. So I want to bring you guys Dr. Tom. I want him to introduce himself give his background, and then we're going to get into answering a lot of the questions that people have had for you and what periodontists do for a living. What is their purpose? What is their role in the healthcare field? And so forth. Then we're going to get in and talk about his published books that he has done over the past couple of years. He's published many research articles as well, and he teaches on top of it. So he is a man of many traits, and I am very grateful to have you on this morning. So Tom, would you like to introduce yourself and give us a background of who you are? Well, I would have to say that uh, based on what uh, Christiana said, I'm really a legend in my own mind. So <laughs> legendary, <laughs> legendary. So uh, periodontists, uh, it's a it's a wonderful field because it's it's really close to medicine in many ways because uh, we really focus on the overall health of the patient and periodontal disease, actually the, the most recent article in the last week showed that if you had periodontal disease, it increased your risk of dying from COVID-19 by nine times. Oh, that's which, recent, which huh? Which is amazing. Yeah, this is last week because periodontal disease, the bacteria get everywhere. Here's a, they go from the mouth, here's a, it shows you, it goes throughout the body. So there's about, 40 different diseases it affects. The most significant, of course, is uh, heart disease. The most recent article showed it increased your risk of myocardial infarction by four times. Wow. Uh, increases lung disease, pneumonia. That's why people are dying from COVID compared to all disease, because they die from pneumonia and the bacteria get into the lungs. They also, even more interesting is that the, the bacteria that we see, the spirochetes, they have been found in the brain of 90% of Alzheimer's people. So they think that maybe if we treated periodontal disease, we could reduce the risk of Alzheimer's because wow. uh, the spirochetes are uh, what killed Al Capone. They're a different spirochete. He had syphilis spirochete, <laughs> Al Capone, but uh, it got into his brain. Well, these get into the brain the same way they, and they, they cause Alzheimer's. So that's do they how, how do study. how do they yeah. how do they travel and get that far in the body? They get into the bloodstream. You can see, um, actually, maybe in this diagram, I have another diagram handy. They get into the bloodstream because there's an ulceration of the pocket. When you have gum disease, the inside of the gum is actually ulcerated, just like you skinned your elbow. And if you have it all over, think about it, 360 degrees around 28 T, they figure the, the injury is as big around as the palm of your hand. So it's like having a big infection on your leg that's infected, it spreads throughout the body. And like an open wound. Open wound, yeah. It's an open wound, really. And that's why they say even on the skin, you know, you could have the smallest cut and the rate of pathogens getting in there so quick, it can be so yeah. small. So even when you eat, uh, that, that ulcerated bacteria spreads throughout the body, all right? That's crazy. Yeah. All right, so tell us a little bit about yourself and where you are today, how you got there, and we'll throw in one of the questions that someone's asked you. How have you kept so successful over these 49 years? I think the, the thing that's key uh, for all, all people in all businesses is a focus on uh, helping people. You know, I um, 
every day I put in my pocket here a little thing. It says, saving lives by saving smiles, be helpful and kind, and make the biggest possible contribution to people. So I, I, I start with that every day. And you and he, and I will tell you guys, I see Tom once a week and he comes in with his post-it now right in his scrub pocket. So I, I watch it. I put it on my uh, steering wheel and I look at it in the morning. So and I the other thing is that I remember my that um, the great Woody Allen saying that 90 percent of success is just showing up. So the reason the way I've worked 10,000 days. All right. I worked about 10,000 days, is that I, it's one day at a time. I remember that uh, just going out the door is 90% of it. That's I think true. the, the, um, the fuller brush salesman, there used to be fuller brush salesmen, there were 8,000 of them. You probably don't even know about that. No. They used to go door <laughs> to door. There's one left in San Francisco. So they interviewed him, I said, how do you do it? He said, well, the hardest part is just going out the door. Once I'm out the door, I'm fine. So he goes out the door. That's what I do. If I go out the door, I'm fine. Now, as I've said, a lot of times I'll go out the door and I'll try to get back in, but my wife locks the door. I'm pounding on the door and she won't let me back in. She says, you go to work, get out of the house. So it's embarrassing to be pounding on the door and the neighbors are looking at me. So that's how I've done it with the support of my wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's really got she's she's really pushed you out the door she pushes me out the door and blocks <laughs> it i can't get back in so i might as well just go to work <laughs> and once i'm there i usually show up i mean other, that that's the other, a, that's the amazing success you know <laughs> that's what we yeah. need to get <laughs> the other thing of course is uh always be marketing you know we do a lot of courses for people we send out stuff to, well just just Yesterday, we sent out the article to the to our patients and everybody about the COVID-19 thing. And we uh, sent out um, in our book that we wrote, we uh, all the proceeds go to Broward Health. And we gave $1,000 to them just last week. So we sent that out to people. So we're always marketing. Uh, and you, to, you made yeah. a huge donation during COVID-19 as well. Oh, yes. We, we gave... Uh, the Broward Hospital didn't have any mask or or covers. They ran out. We happened to through a, a contact. We got lots of lots of N95 masks, so we were able to give 700 masks and a bunch of gowns to Broward Health uh, back in like February or March. It was very uh, early. Yeah, where they didn't have them, they actually didn't have them. So we were able to help them, and we also gave them to all the dentists. About 30 dentists came by and we gave them each about 10 masks. Amazing. So we, we, that, was, that was helpful. And being helpful actually comes back to you. It so does. You're, you're right. Mission and marketing. That's it. Now, when, you're, when you were younger in your career and you started all of this, did you have this much insight back then? Or was it through, you know, setbacks and, and roadblocks that you got to this point in terms of, the way you think no, so I, I um, you know, I, I did a lot of self-learning, self-development. And, uh, you know, that's why I came up with uh, all of that self-learning is in my book here, you know. The, yes, uh, which I got here too. Yeah, the, you know, I got the, the five great secrets to avoiding life's big mistakes and Not living even. a highly successful life. So do your best to enjoy each day and make it great. Carpe diem. So I think every day I think carpe diem, you know, because um, you don't know what tomorrow will bring. You're right. So seize now you, the day. Now yeah. you had a, a scare. Yes. Yes, I did. That I had really changed your life around as well. 12 years ago, I was climbing the Great Wall of China and my wife said they gave us 90 minutes. They meant for us to go up halfway and come back down. But my wife says... No, we got to make it to the top. They don't call it the Great Wall of China because it's a little bitty wall. It's huge. And the steps are gigantic. So, okay, if she's going, I'm going. Well, I mean, it was insanely difficult. When I got back, I couldn't go up the steps 
in the cruise ship for like three or four days, Mike, and I was in not bad shape, but I blew a plaque. If you extreme exercise, heart disease, believe it or not, is not, it's a blood clot, a, a plaque breaks and a blood clot forms. So then I was not feeling very well, but, uh, you know, my wife with her compassion, we were trying to get to the airport. She says, come on, keep up with me. She was trying to kill me, I know, because of the insurance. But anyway, I, I got back and I said, the tennis, I was taking a tennis lesson. The guy said, you know, you're really dogging it. So I called my physician, Dr. Chisner, who's a friend of mine. He, he wasn't in that day, Friday. I said, you know, I need to get a, an echo stress test to see if there's anything wrong with me. They said, well, you, he can't, you can't do that without his okay. I said, well, he's okay. He'll okay it. But anyway, he called in just then, you know, how he called in to check on his patients. I said, okay. I said, he said, well, I'm going by to pick up my mail and everything before I leave to go on to, to a wedding. Why don't you come by and I'll take a quick check? Well, I said, you know, in my wisdom, I said, I can't come by now. I've got to get my racket restrung because I've been gone for three weeks, you see? <laughs> he said, all right, come by. So they did a echo and it turned out that I had, oh, uh, uh, they, they did a uh, uh, place to stand. I had a 90% blockage wow. of the, 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 the widow maker, they call it. Yes, left anterior the left descending main, right? artery. Yeah, left anterior descending. And, and if I had a, I was just saying, well, I just gutted out. I was going out and play tennis that Sunday. I would have been dead for sure. So that it was a big thing on me. And it, it made me, gave me another chance. And that's why I really focus on, uh, you know, I feel like I've sent back really, actually, it sounds kind of crazy as an angel to be as helpful as I can to people. So I think about that every day. I got an extra chance to be, you know, I try to do two acts of kindness every, every day. day. You yeah. know, it's amazing. My my father had the same. Uh, he was 90% clogged as well. Uh, his two brothers had heart attacks earlier that year. And my mom was like Brenda, just nagging my father to go get checked, get checked, get checked. And lo and behold, they had him in the surgery the next day. And it makes yeah. me think, you know, when you bring up the topic of periodontal disease, and the correlation with cardiovascular effects. He's had issues with his mouth his whole life, you know, implants, bridges, all that stuff. So even though some, some, you know, some of it's hereditary, I, I, I want to go back and say, I bet you a lot of it had to do with the effect that he had a lot of periodontal issues. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a genetic component to it, but it's mostly bacterial. It's All crazy. Right? It's All mostly right, bacterial. So let's talk about a little bit of the questions that I have here that some people have spoken to me about. And let's, let's go off the very basic one, which is what is the role of a periodontist? Because a lot of people don't know the difference. And I'll kind of tie two questions in actually on what the difference is between a regular dentist and a periodontist. So a periodontist uh, focuses really on the support of the tooth. You know, we're like uh, uh, foundation people. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Or a dentist is more like a roofer. He puts the crowns on the top, etc. So, you know, you wouldn't want to build a house on a bad foundation. Right. And the foundation is eaten away just like maybe uh, pilings in the in in your deck, they get eaten eaten away by uh, by uh, bacteria, etc. And the house gets eaten away. It's like having termites in your house. Right. So they they create inflammation. You lose bone, and the teeth eventually get loose and fall out. So uh, if you have a cavity problem, you go to a dentist. But if you have bleeding gums or bad breath, or you see redness in your gums. Bleeding gums always indicates gum disease. So don't think some bleeding is normal. It's common, but it's not normal. About half the people will have it, okay? But if you have bleeding gums, always you want to get that stopped. You don't want any bleeding spots. And how would you get rid of bleeding spots? You get rid of bleeding spots by getting the bacteria away there. Now, most of them 
are going to be between the teeth. So it's not a brushing area. It's an area that you can use floss, or if you don't like to floss, use those little soft picks between the teeth. And even better, would put a little baking soda on the soft picks and put it between the teeth. The bacteria do not like uh, baking soda or salt. All right. Okay. And what would you say when you talk about, see, you know, the whole thing that you've opened my eyes to is when we were, when we were younger, we always went to the dentist, right? We just went to the dentist and then eventually they send you to the orthodontist, you fix your alignment. Would you say that it's even beneficial for kids growing up to start going to a periodontal, even just for routine checkup, because you know, you talk about that foundation, it's almost like physical mm -hmm. therapy when I treat patients, right? I want to build a really good foundation before I try and strength drain on top of that. Otherwise, you know, then we lead to injuries and stuff. So I'm wondering, do you believe that it should be kind of mandatory as you're growing up to like go and check in with the periodontist, just like you have to with a dentist? Well, I think that the pedodontist and the dentist are fine up to about age 20 okay right? then then's when the gingivitis starts to be uh, a, a concern a concern okay yeah what kind of bacteria do you do find in people's mouths and what are the i guess what what are the worst kinds and and how come they can occur is it just because they're not flossing or well they occur you can get them they're, it's transmissible from other people. Oh, okay. You're not born with it. You're not born with it. So you get it from other people. Your parents had gum disease like yours, all right? But you've taken care of it to keep them out of there. If you don't have bleeding gums, they, they don't get a good niche to get started. They need a little fer fertile ground to get started. They need some gingivitis to get in there. That's how they get in there. So there's there's really probably 15 or 20 different bacteria. The worst are probably uh, the spirochetes or little wormy things, and then amoeba and, and trichomonads. So amoeba, here's a picture of amoeba. We find these in about three fourths of people, okay? So they're, they're like globs, okay? And they, you can see it, they eat the eat the nucleus, they suck the nucleus out of white blood cells. Wow. That's what that amoeba is doing right there. It's sucking the nucleus out of the white blood cell. So they eat five a day. So they reduce your host resistance because they're eating the white blood cells. Right. All right? Uh, and then the, when they eat a white blood cell and suck the nucleus out, the enzymes in the white blood cells spread into the tissue and the white blood cell is no longer effective. It's just a ghost cell. But all those enzymes are like poisons that, uh, that help destroy the, the lining of your pocket again. So that's, 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 that's the worst one. And uh, those, the, the, the challenge with those is that you can't get rid of them yourself. You need, you, need, you need professional help. You can brush four times a day, won't do it. Okay. So what I found interesting is the first time I scheduled an appointment in your office was something that I've never experienced in a dental office, which was, you know, I had a slide taking of my saliva. So I find it amazing in your office that you go in and actually look under the microscope like we would in biology class mm -hmm. to see how bad the bacteria is in your mm -hmm. patient's mouth. Do a lot of periodontists do that, or is that no, something you we've just actually? Uh, uh, they should, but uh, they don't, honestly. So we actually pioneered the the treatment of the cause of the disease, not just the result. And uh, we had a microscope for like thirty five years, and we take it on every patient every time, so we can identify what the cause is. Then we treat, we actually treat to cure the disease because we know what's in there. So when a patient is done in six months with treatment, we wait till they give them six months to see if it's coming back. We test them and they'll be gone 98% of the time. Wow. You know? So they're cured. Then we say we can cure you, but you have to keep them out. And right. we say you need to do 
tongue cleaning, a lot of bacteria live on the tongue. All right. So you have to scrape it multiple times. You have to clean. We say the FBI. Okay. Tongue clean, floss, but you can use soft picks if you want. Brush, that's the least important. And we want you to irrigate with an antiseptic. Okay. So just like if you have ants in your house, if you clean real well, they'll still be there. You may need to put some ant killer down. All right. That's what I, I think that was the big change that you guys made for me. Not only the flossing, but the irrigation part, mm -hmm. you know, you we are, yeah. I knew like Listerine, but I didn't know like you could get in no. and take it. It's care a of much better deal. So we have the bug guy come around our house every month. He brings a little spray thing that sprays in the cracks behind everything. That's what a water pick does to keep the bugs down. That's amazing. So talk to us a little bit about, and this is something I've talked to you alone about the laser that you have at your office that is so different. And again, I never even heard about it until I met you because one, I never had an issue so severe for periodontal disease, but I've heard from other people that, you know, the trauma that they have to go through to cut and, you know, mm -hmm. repair and sew patients almost don't even want to do it or go through it right. because no, it, it hurts so much. So, so talk I to us about that laser. Yeah. I trained at Boston university, the most elite uh, school for surgery in the world. And so I was a, a great surgeon. I trained with a uh, great Jerry Kramer. And so, but I noticed after being in practice for a while that, that it was pretty traumatic to patients and it wasn't getting rid of the bacteria very effectively. So I began a search and in 1990, I went up to Canada. I found that there was a guy was using a laser up there. It was much gentler to the patient and it, was, and it looked like it had the potential to kill bacteria because you can lose laser energy in the pocket. So I got the first one in the country in 1990. And since that time, I've done more than anybody in the world, over 5,000 procedures. And I've published two different studies showing that it actually kills the bacteria. Because when I first got it, people said that I was a quack because this thing uh, was crazy, you know. So I had to do my own. I had to actually publish my own studies to show that it actually killed the bacteria. It kills the bacteria. It's much, much gentler to patients. It works better, and uh, and the postoperative pain is is hardly any. Which is so amazing. It's 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 a, it's, a, it's actually a miracle, honestly. How does it work exactly? Well, it works by laser energy goes into the pocket and produces a, 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 a pulse of energy that pulses for one ten thousandths of a second though, or a hundred millionths of a second. So it doesn't burn if you keep it moving. So you right. can go right across this like that. But uh, so that's how you, if you keep it moving and a bacteria can't survive that you know, as soon as it touches it, because it's uh, almost a thousand degrees centigrade, believe it or not, but it's one, 100 millionth of a second. So it's pulsing. So you can get in there and, and kill all the bacteria. So that's how it works. It reminds me of the laser that we learned in school in physical therapy that um, you can help with open wounds, mm -hmm. like on yeah. the actual skin. Mm -hmm. And do you find the success rate if people continue to take care of their teeth, do you find a high success rate rather than the, the cutting and scraping, obviously? Yes, it's a, it's a higher success rate and uh, much less discomfort. They don't get the gum recession. They don't get uh, the tooth sensitivity. When you cut and, and the gum goes up, you get longer teeth, it looks better. And uh, the success rate, if, if, if we get rid of the bacteria virtually every time. The success rate depends on how the patient will do the FBI. Right. Right. And many of them do it. Some of them don't. And also, it also depends on their exposure to their spouse or significant other who has a lot of infection. If they're not taking care of it, that little plaque, the bacteria will get in there. They can also get it from their dog. All right. So the dog... The dog has periodontal disease. We've seen several people get it from their dog, you know. What do you notice uh, different uh, in, in the difference of the bacteria between dog bacteria and, 
human bacteria is it pretty much there's the not, same? There's not much difference. And okay. in fact, even Garfield got into the thing. This is a Garfield cartoon, okay? All right, so here's the dog kissing him. It says, uh, did he lick his perio problem before he licked me? <laughs> so the dog can get you. Actually, we are gonna do another one of these on, on how to how to keep your dog's mouth healthy because dogs get more periodontal disease than humans. Yes. Because as much as we've tried, and even Christiana has trained her dog so well, she can't get her dog to floss. She just won't do it. <laughs> those so, are, so those are some big spaces too. <laughs> that's right. It's so easy, but he gets impulsive. He, he pokes himself in the eye. It's not worth trying. No. You know? <laughs> yeah. So we will be doing, Dr. Tom and I will be doing in March a video on how to actually clean your dog's teeth successfully. And that was something that Tom was amazed when he met me as he met Chloe, which most of you guys who follow me for a long time is our dog. And, you know, one of the things that scared me when we rescued her was making sure that her teeth were very clean because I had seen, I think it was Facebook, some sort of social media network, someone's dog had passed away because of perio disease. And I was like, that's awful. That like that's something you it's could totally really prevent. preventable, right? And the dog's teeth are actually easier to clean because there's spaces between them, right? You just have to start as a puppy as you did, and and Chloe's teeth are perfect, and her gums, perfect. yeah, teeth and gums. That's what I meant. Yeah, her the gums. gums. She that's... has no no gingivitis, nothing. So nope. start when they're babies, and even if it's a little later, you can start later, but you have to be slow with it. You know, yeah. but you must do it. Otherwise. They get she gets used to it. You know, she got used to it over the years. The, obviously the beginning, you know, you're fighting the dog a little bit, but. Once a year clean by the, by the veterinarian is helpful, but it won't do it. It'd be just like if you didn't clean your mouth for a year and you came in and had your teeth cleaned at the hygienist. And they, took, oh. and, and they put you out for it too. And they put you out for it too, which is crazy. The risk of, of general anesthesia. How would you like it if, if you never brush your teeth for a year and you came into the hygienist or to the dentist and we uh, put you out, completely out, general anesthesia now. We're not talking sedation to clean your teeth. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and it's, and it's terrible on the dog. Terrible on the dog. The dog, uh, just like humans, general anesthesia can affect your brain, you know? It, it's true. It's very true. So let's go into a couple other questions. I'm going to go through let's see how i can break these up yeah let's let's talk about this someone had asked us what is the difference between dental bridges or implants okay well a bridge um is when you it's, we're talking about a missing tooth here now so a bridge goes from a, the tooth behind to the tooth in front all right but you have to put a crown on the teeth so that means you have to cut the tooth down to a sort of a peg and then put a put a, a, a crown on top of it and then a, a soldered joint between it, just like a bridge across the river. Follow okay. me? So the problem with that is when you cut a tooth down, I'd say maybe as many as at least 15% of them, the nerve dies. Then you need a root canal. So then they do a root canal and of root canals, about 10 to 15% of them are not successful. So you, then you end up with losing the tooth from it and you've got the crown margin, which uh, doesn't fit so well. Bacteria can live along the sides of it. So that's a bridge. So if the ideal thing, if you have the bone is to put an implant is just a, basically a, a titanium screw that mm. they put in. And inside it has a little post on top of it and you can put a crown on top of the post. And that's so, less likely to have the bacterial effects too right it'll what it'll there's less of a bacteria infection with an implant than there is with a bridge not really not really well in some ways yes but a, a, implants have to be cleaned just like teeth they're actually more susceptible to to gum disease than teeth in fact i'm giving a three-hour lecture on on periimplantitis this coming saturday about how how to protect implants. So you you really have to protect implants just like you do teeth. But 
a bridge would be more susceptible because it's hard to clean under it. So right. In that sense, you got to thread under it. You can't floss it. But all things being equal, uh, um, an implant is is more susceptible than a tooth because it doesn't have a what we call a periodontal ligament around it, so that bacteria can go further in there quicker. So. Makes sense. Okay, so let me see if we had anything else with the. Oh, let's 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 go into the business side of things because a lot of people are interested on that. That you've been running your practice for so long. So someone has said, how and when did you decide to open up your own practice and how have you been so successful for so many years? Well, I always had a lot of autonomy. That's one of my high things. So I like to control my own destiny. So that's how I decided to open my own practice. And as we've said a little earlier, the the thing that's that's helped me be successful is that from the start, I always tried to do what was best for the patient, you know, and I didn't, uh, um, so I, you know, how can I be helpful to them? And I, I tried to listen to them and uh, find a commonality with them. And um, so just doing a really good job on the people I saw is the key, just like you're doing. That's how you build it. Right. You do a really good job on the people you see and they'll tell other people. And then of course, like you're doing this now, this is called marketing, by the way. Right. <laughs> so again, being really good and also being really good at what you do. I hate to say it, but you're really good at what you do. And I, I read a lot and, and publish a lot and, and I publish, I've, edited at least a hundred newsletters that go to about 20,000 people. You know, I've written four books. So I lecture like I'm lecturing this weekend to, to people. So when you lecture and, and teach, it forces you to learn stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, like this morning I was putting a slide together on, on a, a new study that just came out this week. Okay. So, uh, you know, showing another type of laser wasn't very effective. So, you know. And science is always changing too. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things about lasers is that lasers is, is in some ways a generic term like transportation, but there are about 40 different lasers and they all have different properties. So it's not, you know, there's just, uh, many of them aren't very effective. Now, that, does that depend on like the wavelength of the laser? Well, it, 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 absolutely. The wavelength uh, of the laser is critical. Some lasers uh, don't go, go, go through water. Uh, some lasers, uh, uh, the diode laser is really a laser to create heat, but all it is is a hot instrument run around the pocket or the Indy Yag laser is pulsed and the energy goes into the tissue as a, as a true laser effect. So, so do you find that in the perio world that they've just come up with like a whole slew of different lasers that just kind of threw them out on the market? When yes, they, they have. This? Yeah, they have. There's, there's, uh, they, they come out with them and they, uh, without a real understanding of the physics of this, you can't change physics. You can make claims. Uh, Early on, we had a, a CO2 laser. They said, well, that'll do hemostasis. Well, CO2 laser is not absorbed by hemoglobin. So we kept wondering why wasn't it stopping? But they, they make all kinds of, of, of claims, but it didn't, it didn't, didn't work because the, the physics of it were wrong. And, and, it, and it goes down to that. You can't, can't mess with physics on that. No, it's different. All of them are different depending on their wavelengths. They started. 650 nanometers and go up to 10,000 nanometers in, in wavelengths, you know. Then lower wavelengths are actually x-rays. Those can do damage. And higher wavelengths are maybe radio waves. Right, which also- So there's just a, a narrow range of, of waves links that work for him for lasers. And then, yeah, the same goes in physical therapy. You know, we have different types of lasers. We have different types of 
light therapy, uh, stim, electric stimulation. And, you know, and even if you talk about electric stimulation, I don't think people know enough on, on along the lines of when, when is the pain occurring? So if there's more acute pain earlier on, the wavelength and the frequency is going to be different because you're targeting different pain fibers at an acute phase where you're doing a alpha fibers. And if you're talking about more chronic pain, you're talking about more of those, you know, C fibers and you have a completely different wavelength and frequency on there. So, you know, just smacking stim on someone isn't great. If you don't know, again, like you're saying the physics exactly. behind it on what are you treating? How are you treating it? Mm-hmm. So I agree with you on that. It's a, you know, the same, in, same thing in our field. There's so many different lasers and stimulations and stuff like that. But if you don't know the, the science behind it, you don't know what you're actually doing. You can actually be either ineffective or cause more trauma to someone. Correct. Right. Uh, so let's talk about this. When you, when did you want to start teaching and how did you kind of go? I feel like you do more teaching now than you have in the past. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've always been doing teaching. I, I, uh, when the school started out there, they asked me to do, they asked me to do the lecture on microbiology and they gave me a award because I'd done it for 21 years. Uh, this was at uh, Nova? At Nova. Nova Southeastern. Okay. Yeah, this year they gave me an award, um, a plaque. Okay. So, uh, and uh, so the, generally they ask me and uh, uh, when it's at a local school or something, I accept, you know, when it's occasionally when it's out of town, I accept, you know, we gave a, we've lectured quite a bit out of town, but I'm not keen on that because it's, you have to travel, yeah. et cetera, you know? So I would say mostly you get, I get asked. And then, uh, like I was asked to do this lecture on perianplantitis this weekend. Um, I, I was asked to lecture on my book to the students out there. So I do that, uh, lecture on microbiology. And, uh, so mostly I get asked, that's what happens, you know? So, um, and certainly just like uh, being on this, the, I'm on the state board of dentistry. So that's a kind of a teaching uh, thing also, because you're really trying to protect the health of the public and increase the uh, quality of care of dentistry. So we're looking at cases that, that uh, people make mistakes and we're trying to, protect the public and for example there were over 100 applicants for that position and I didn't apply they called me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing it so I checked with my family and I said okay I think I can make a difference I think I can make leave dentistry in a better place so that's and that how, is your and that is definitely that. your legacy for sure right right leave a legacy make dentistry better so how, how have you liked being on the board so far? Cause that's, that's fairly new. Yeah. I, uh, I actually like it. I have to say, I like it. It's, uh, as I say, it's a chance to make a difference. Um, there's a, um, a laser issue coming up that, uh, they want the hygienist to use lasers. And, uh, I know a lot about lasers. <laughs> so of course you do i find out that uh, it really increases the cost of patients with uh, no evidence that's doing any benefit it just puts like a, a hot poker in the pocket and they run it around shortly there's no benefit to the patient so we're gonna we'll get to rule on that so that's something that makes a difference it prevents them from doing what i call a sham procedure Right. And which will delay people getting to appropriate therapy. So the disease gets worse. You know, and, and that's like negligence on, on that when you talk about the severity of it transferring to a systemic health issue. Exactly. There's also leaving people with disease when you're doing a sham procedure and they think, say, I'm using a laser. Well, it's, it's actually the laser produces heat, but it's nothing like a real laser effect. All it does is 
it's on half the time and off half the time. So it's just, it's a hot poker. With a Would laser that actually re- multiply the bacteria? No, it'll kill some. It just, it, but the study is showing it doesn't do anything. They it, come back quickly. Right, it won't be as effective. No, not nearly as effective. All right, so let's go into, I want to talk about these amazing books that you've published. This was the first one that I got from you. Yes, yes. So talk to us about how you were inspired to write this one specifically. Well, this one came uh, back in 2008 when all many of my friends and the physicians, dentists, lawyers, and everybody were going broke. So my wife, who's, who's my uh, inspiration and support, she said, you've got all this information because I read extensively. You know, you'll see the bibliographies in these books are because I took Evelyn Wood reading course three times. That was back in the day when you could learn to read like 5,000 words a minute. Now. Yes. It was crazy. And you actually can, but unless you keep practicing, you don't. But I still read way faster than I would have normally. So I get through books quickly. But anyway, you need to help these people. So I said, okay, let's find out what the mistakes are the uh, uh, people are making and uh, give them a a manual so that they'll, um, you know, not wake up at age 50 or 60 with no money. It's crazy. And a lot of them do, you know. They have to work, which is not a good way to be. No. If you don't have to work, if the money's not driving you, it makes life a lot easier. So that came out of trying to help people be more financially successful. What what inspired you to, what I love about it is that it's called The Four Simple Secrets to Avoiding Life's Big Financial Mess Stakes. Okay. So a mess stake is a mistake um, repeated and not learned from it creates life's messes so i call all my books talk about mistakes a mess because you don't learn from it right i mean it's, you keep doing the same thing over and over and nothing's changing that, yeah nothing's changing so that was that was one that really hit home for me especially when we had our talk about being a young entrepreneur and I know this is something I I should get on and talk about because I've had a lot of other people ask me, you know, how it is being so young, you know, being an entrepreneur, relying on yourself financially. And I found myself doing the same thing you were talking about. I'm just work, 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 seven days a week. And then it gets to a point where you just crash. You just crash and burn because you literally just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again until, you know, You do, you do crash. And that was something when you handed me that book that made me open up and realize, you know, you, you got to live as well, but not live to a point where you, you're putting yourself into a rut. Yeah. I talk, uh, the key thing is balancing the five aspects of your life, you know, the spiritual health, you know, uh, making a positive difference in other people's lives, the mental health, uh, you know, choose your thoughts to avoid being a victim, expect problems and turn them into opportunities. So the key thing is, uh, see, mental error is that I'm being treated unfairly, I'm a victim, and I'm entitled to things. Those are the three basic things that will kill you mentally, all right? I feel like that's uh, a huge thing nowadays with social media, Mm-hmm. So I always, uh, the other thing that I talk about is uh, expect problems. There's something, this is another uh, physics principle called entropy. Mm. Things are always breaking down, always. Right. So your cars are breaking, just our, our uh, uh, oven just broke here, okay? Our, uh, uh, you know, things are breaking around here all the time, you know? So expect it. I mean, it's going to break. Everything's going to break. So I, I, to help me get through that, because things in an office, we have like 500 different systems. So something's broke all the time. So if I come in on a Monday morning and something's not broke by about 10 o'clock, 
I just go break something just to get it over with. <laughs> I know it's going to happen. So, so we, for the spiritual, mental, physical, you got to manage your physical health. All right. Uh, I say eat, exercise regularly, eat less calories than you burn, get adequate rest, regular medical checkups, and do your best to prevent contracting COVID-19. So let's talk questions. about that one. Cause that is the, the book that I really want to talk about right now, just because you're doing so many good things with this. Right. So Tom just recently published this book. It's called a blueprint for a highly successful life, a survival guide for the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is available on Kindle as yeah. well as paperback and it will be on audiobook, right? Yeah. I'm working on it right now. Okay. And all the proceeds, well, Talk to me about the proceeds. Well, we give all the proceeds to Broward Health to the Employee Relief Fund there. They have their employees, a lot of them were laid off during the COVID pandemic. They weren't doing surgeries for four or five months. Right. And uh, so they ended up really needing help. Some of them couldn't pay their rent. So we like that these are frontline workers who need money. So we all the proceeds we sold, you know, uh, enough books to pr- we gave them a thousand dollars last week and we yeah. hope we'll you know as people give it we'll give them more money so all That's the okay. proceeds go to Broward Health the employee relief fund yeah I like this book because you did bring back a lot from your mistakes book but what did you find differently in this that you twisted a little bit and inspired to make it more along the lines of we're going through a, a pandemic we're in a completely different situation than 2008. And how are we going to navigate through that? Well, the thing that the, the first book was financial primarily. Right. All right. I felt that what I was seeing is that people were having, you know, mental problems. So one of my son's friends committed suicide. Suicide rates went up. So I they, said, they have. we need a, a book that talks more about all aspects of your life, the spiritual, the mental, the physical, the relationship, and the financial. Obviously, financial is important, but if your relationships suck, you're not going to be very happy, you know? Right. Your health is is terrible, and, uh, you know, you're not going to be happy. And if your 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 mental health is bad and you, you lose track of your mission, you know, so that's how you survive the pandemic. You balance all these is- areas. And, and uh, so that's what I tried to do rather than focus on the financial. Which I think is great because that's where, as a, as a, as a, as a physical therapist, even though I spend a lot more time with my clients in a, than a regular orthopedic setting, that's what I've been finding that I'm ending up talking through with most of my patients, even though I'm not a psychologist or a therapist, I'm finding there's a lot of, correlation between the psychological aspect of what they're going through, what the pandemic has done to them, what they're fearing, what their relationships are like, you know, working from home, not being interactive, and then how that's affecting their pain, whether, you know, it is truly physical or it's coming from the mental aspect or the mental aspect is overriding that physical aspect. And that's why I really wanted to get you on here too, because I want to, I want to promote this book because a lot of people, I, I don't know one person I honestly haven't talked to that's not going through something psychologically through this time. I don't see how you could, you know, this is an epic crisis, you know, this makes the 2008 financial crisis look like nothing. Nothing, yeah. All right. So uh, that's why I wrote this book to to uh, give them a blueprint to survive the right. aftermath of the COVID-19, you know. I mean, Which, don't get it, but the aftermath is, is even if you, if you don't get it, the aftermath is, is, is brutal on all aspects of your life. And so it's still going on. It's still going on. It's not over. That's why this book is, uh, we just went to press like three weeks ago or so. So it's, it's, uh, this is, it's a blueprint to help you survive it. And that's what we're trying to do. No, I, I applaud you always because I just find every... Every week that I see you, that you're always doing something better, something that you can improve someone else's life on. And, you know, I hope to have a legacy like you do when I'm, when I'm done here. So 
You, you very much You're inspire well. me on a daily basis. <laughs> so Tom answered a lot of our questions here. I know if you guys have other questions, he does have this book as well. Now, Tom, where can we find this one? Well, that's on Amazon, or you can go to Macaulay.com and download it for nothing. So uh -huh. I will put the links for these books and Macaulay.com Macaulay's website or go to Amazon, either one. And this is Mark. Right. This is Tom's son. You want to talk to us a little bit about Mark and what he's doing for you and what he's going to do with the Macaulay business? Well, he's, uh, he's doing a lot for me. He's allowing me to work less, which I like the balance. <laughs> okay. And uh, he's become an expert in doing implants. So he's, he's, he's really good at that. And, um, you know, it's just a pleasure to, to leave a legacy through your son. It's one of the neater things you can have happen in your life. And you have four beautiful sons. I have four sons, yes. Uh, three attorneys and one periodontist. Amazing. And they're all great, too, Sue. Yeah. They are. Brenda puts up with a lot, though. She does. She puts <laughs> up with an awful lot, you know. So that's why we keep her heavily medicated. But <laughs> <laughs> so I will share you guys and uh with with this one do the uh the proceeds go to the dental education so yes we give we give those to Nova Nova okay. part of it goes to Nova amazing you're just always giving back I love it all right so Tom I want to thank you for spending your morning with me on a Sunday and on Valentine's Day so make sure you thank Brenda for allowing me to steal you for some time. Yeah, well, she's in there taking a nap now, so she's fine with it. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Anyway, I just wanna say I appreciate you very much, not even just as a, a mentor of mine, but just being a part of my life and always sharing your wisdom because a lot of people don't wanna share that wisdom that you have. And you're not only just sharing it with me, you're sharing it with the whole world. and it's easy access to, to gain as well. So you really make it easy for a lot of people. And I just want to say that your legacy will totally live on. I know Mark is a wonderful person as well. And I see that in him as well. So cheers to you for being who you are. I really, I really am grateful to have you on today. Well, cheers to you, Christiana. Christiana, by the way, is a, a superstar at what she does. And she's helped me a lot with lots of little injuries that I have. It's amazing what she does. So uh, she's a, uh, a superstar and she's going to have a, and already has a great career ahead of her. And she's doing exactly what we've talked about today, focusing completely on helping people and uh, doing a great job on each one. And that's why she's so successful at a young age. So kudos I appreciate to that, you. Tom. Thank you very much. All right. So I'm going to stop the recording now. And I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any questions for Dr. Tom, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Christiana Marin. I will have all of Tom's books available to you in the comment section down below. And feel free to reach out to him if you guys have any questions at all. Happy Sunday.